During the Vietnam War, the container ship USS Mayaguez was seized by the Communist Party of Kampuchea's troops, better known as the Khmer Rouge. The crew wasn't hurt, and there was no apparent reason for the seizing of the ship. But the Ford administration wasn't willing to allow international embarrassment at the hands of a country that they considered an insignificant enemy. This was no ordinary rescue mission. Freeing the USS Mayaguez became an issue of national prestige. After a one-day battle on the island of Koh Tang, the Khmer Rouge freed the ship and the crew of the Mayaguez. But this came at a tremendous human cost. Although the rescue mission was considered an act of triumph in the United States, there were 41 casualties. It would be the last battle of the Vietnam War, and three of the rescuers would be the final names inscribed on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Seize of the Mayaguez On the afternoon of May 12, 1975, the USS Mayaguez was en route from Hong Kong to Sataheep, Thailand. The container ship carried commercial products and 77 containers of government and military cargo. As it sailed through a well-established sea lane 60 miles from the Cambodian port of Kampong Sam, a Khmer Navy swiftboat challenged the Mayaguez. The gunboat crew fired a rocket-propelled grenade across the ship's bow, forcing Captain Charles T. Miller to stop it. Seven men carrying AK-47s and rocket-propelled grenade launchers boarded the vessel. With a map in hand, Battalion Commander Sa Mayan pointed to the east of Polo Wai, where he wanted the Mayaguez to go. At 2.18 p.m., Captain Miller ordered an SOS transmission, which warned that their ship had been towed to an unknown Cambodian port. The distress call was received by the Delta Exploration Company in Jakarta, Indonesia, and forwarded to the American Embassy in Jakarta. The Mayaguez anchored at Polo Wai for the night. The next morning, it was taken to Koh Tang, an island 30 miles south of the Cambodian coast. At the time, reasons for seizing the ship were unclear. In previous days, Cambodian forces had been involved in four different incidents with foreign vessels in international waters. There didn't appear to be a clear plan to attack the United States. But when the news reached Washington the following morning, the seizing was seen as an act of provocation and humiliation. Senator Barry Goldwater reportedly said that the incident was, quote, a little half-assed country taking a shot at us. The United States was suffering from a damaged reputation after two failed operations in which American forces were pushed out of Cambodia. Domestically and internationally, there was a lot of doubt over the United States' leadership. President Gerald Ford was keen on avoiding any comparisons with the Pueblo incident of 1968, where the environmental ship USS Pueblo was attacked and captured by North Korean forces. He was convinced the United States needed a strong and immediate reaction to avoid any possible hostage negotiations. Moreover, he thought it was an excellent opportunity to prove the United States wasn't a helpless giant. The president reportedly stated that the incident would help, quote, to prove that others will be worse off if they tackle us, and not that they can return to the status quo. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger reportedly claimed that showing a forceful response was the administration's priority. Unfortunately, the lives of the crew became a secondary consideration. Secretary Kissinger asked China to mediate with the Khmer Rouge regime to release the USS Mayaguez, but China didn't want to get involved. Later on, the White House issued a press release denominating the incident as an act of piracy. Scattered Forces The Ford administration wasn't under any illusions that the rescue would happen without significant resistance. P-3 Orion surveillance aircraft sent to locate the ship received fire from the island as soon as they encountered the Mayaguez. The fact that U.S. forces were scattered all over the Pacific Ocean made things more complicated. With no warships near the area, the National Command Authority ordered the escort destroyer USS Harold E. Holt and the supply ship USS Vega to steam at full speed to the Gulf of Thailand. Neither of them carried troops. The destroyer USS Wilson and the aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea were also ordered to join the mission, but they would arrive later. On May 14th, the 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines Regiment, was in a training exercise in Okinawa, Japan, when they received their orders to fly to Thailand for the rescue mission. Only a few of its officers had seen combat in Vietnam, and most of the young Marines were still in training. The 1st Battalion, 4th Marines, at the naval base of Subic Bay, was also ordered to assemble. The U.S. Air Force deployed 13 heavy helicopters and several fighter jets in support. There was limited intelligence on the geography of Koh Tang, and aerial surveillance discovered only two viable landing zones available on the island. An estimated 150 to 200 Khmer Rouge members with heavy weapons were on the island. The plan was to send 600 Marines from the 2nd Battalion to a combat assault on Koh Tang. Two helicopters would land on West Beach, and six others on the east side, where the crew was thought to be held. 57 Marines from the 1st Battalion would rescue the ship, and the USS Holt would settle in a blocking position. But due to security classification issues, the Marines weren't told how many Khmer Rouge members were on the island, 
and they proceeded under the belief that only 20 people were there. By the time the Marines were called in, there was a fear that the Mayaguez crew had already been taken mainland. The crew, however, was still on the ship. Instead, it would be machine guns and mortars that awaited the Marines on the beach. Rescue Mission Just after 6 a.m. on May 15th, an HH-53 helicopter approached West Beach. A hundred feet away from landing, heavy gunfire ripped through its fuselage. The crew landed, but the chopper crashed a mile away. Immediately, the Marines engaged in battle with the Cambodians. Air Force A-7s, F-4s, OV-10s, and AC-130s supported the ground attack, but the 100 Marines on the beach needed reinforcements. The East and West units were unable to link up, and ammunition started running low on both sides. Lance Corporal Ashton Loney was the first one to fall to the Khmer Rouge. At 8.15 a.m., the chopper Jolly Green 13 landed on the East Beach to extract the isolated platoon, but heavy fire ruptured its fuel lines, and the helicopter had to take off and make an emergency landing in Thailand. Only two hours into the rescue mission, seven of the eight available helicopters had been destroyed or badly damaged. Despite their harsh offensive, the Khmer Rouge acknowledged early on that they'd be unable to hold back the American attack for long. Propaganda Minister Hu Nim sent a radio broadcast explaining that the Mayaguez had only been detained as a warning against violating Cambodian waters. On the broadcast, he said, quote, We have no intention of detaining it permanently, and we have no desire to stage provocations. However, the U.S. refused to stop the attack until the crew of the ship was released. After agreeing to a statement that they hadn't been mistreated, the 39 crewmen were sent on a fishing boat with white flags to the USS Wilson. The crew was asked to call off the American attack. At 11.27 a.m., President Ford appeared on television, announcing the release of the Mayaguez and the crewmen. Marines on Koh Tang were told to cease offensive operations. However, the airstrikes wouldn't end until the Marines were extracted. Khmer Rouge troops also persisted with the battle. After the President's announcement, a hundred additional Marines landed on West Beach. The Cambodian soldiers were forced to retreat into the forest. The helicopters in charge of extraction kept trying to approach the island, but were continuously met with fire. Around 6 p.m., the Jolly Green 11 approached the east side and hovered over the extraction point, managing to resist enemy fire. After 20 Marines boarded it, the chopper took off and released a bomb, causing a massive explosion. For the next two hours, three more helicopters flew to the island to rescue wounded Marines and others from being overrun by the Khmer Rouge. During the extraction mission, 18 men were lost to enemy fire. The choppers would get badly damaged while performing the rescue. They would have to be temporarily fixed to re-enter the island. At 8 p.m., a rescue team combed the beach one last time, looking for any surviving Marines. But they failed to notice the three men from an M60 machine gun team who were still defending the firing position. They would be left behind. Left behind. When Air Force Sergeant Robert Bailey heard the radio transmission from the forgotten machine gun team, he thought the Khmer Rouge were trying to trick them. But after they confirmed their authentication code, Bailey had to give them the hard news. As he said to Newsweek, quote, I was the last to talk to them. I had to tell them that nobody was coming back for them. A rescue operation was planned, but SEAL Team Leader Tom Coulter refused to carry out what he considered a suicide mission. After concurring that the men were unlikely to be saved, the USS Wilson and the rest of the American forces withdrew from the area. On May 16th, Joseph Hargrove was captured after wounding a Khmer Rouge with an M16. Gary Hall and Danny Marshall remained hidden for two days, but they were ambushed on the third night. The Marines were stripped, shackled, and taken to Tianan Pagoda. Theirs are the last three names on the list of casualties from the Vietnam War. In total, 41 U.S. servicemen fell during the battle in Koh Tang. Media accounts of the battle spoke of a triumph that demonstrated the U.S.'s power and strategic resolve. As the Atlantic Journal opined, quote, there seems to be a feeling of joy that at last we have won one. The public reaction was so positive that President Ford's overall approval rating rose 11 percentage points. The airmen of the Air Force were widely decorated for their courage and heroism during the battle. However, experts agree that the Marines haven't received enough recognition for how they handled the situation. The United States achieved the ship's release and ensured its force's reputation. Still, the rescue operation has been criticized for the reckless and hasty decisions that cost 41 men their lives. <laughs>